There's nothing quite as comforting as gathering around with mom friends and sharing stories. Stories have a way of making us feel better, and they're great reminders that no family is perfect, and that's okay. So join us as we share some stories and laugh, learn, and grow together. It's the iMom Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the iMom Podcast. I'm Abby, and I'm here with Megan and Susan. Chloe's still here. Woohoo. <laughs> um, I don't know, Chloe, if you have heard of this social media influencer. Her name is Tara Huck. Multiple people have sent me this video. She's gone viral on TikTok and on Instagram. She, this video was posted a couple of years ago, but it's kind of making its rounds again. The video is of her sharing three unpopular parenting opinions. One of them is, as long as school and chores are done, I don't limit screen time. Another one is, if they don't eat what I make, they don't eat. Is that an unpopular parenting opinion, I by the way? So. I feel like that's Susan's parenting opinion. <laughs> <Yeah. what> I... <laughs> Not making five different meals for five different kids. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but the one that got people talking was, I don't allow sleepovers. And that's what I want to talk about in today's episode, because people had very strong opinions. And it's making me wonder if in 10 years or so, are we going to be talking about sleepovers like we talk about like lawn darts? Do you guys know what lawn lawn darts are? No. Susan, you know what lawn darts are, right? It was like an old game you play in the backyard where you literally like throw a giant dart in the air and try to make it into a circle. But they're like, they can stab you. I mean, you can die. You can <laughs> oh die. my gosh. And people are like, why do parents ever let us this do this? This is why you guys don't know about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like in 10 years, are we going to be saying the same thing? Like, why did my mom, why did my mom let me sleep at another person's house? Like, mm. I mean, it seems kind of far-fetched to think like that, but um. But maybe sleepovers are just going to become this thing where everybody is like, no, not going to not going to allow it. So but before we start this talk, I do want to give a trigger warning for anyone who might have a history with abuse or anything like that, because um, it is going to come up in conversation. So I just wanted to let you know. Um, A YouGov poll asked, would you allow your child to have sleepovers? Seventy four percent said definitely or probably which i thought was surprising yeah. considering um six percent said not sure and 19 percent said no so did you guys go to sleepovers as kids did you allow sleepovers susan what were what was what was your childhood like my childhood or well, my kids childhood both. I'm, I'm curious actually about both yeah i did have sleepovers and i did allow sleepovers however I have a good friend who's a counselor, and she said to me, um, she has a daughter the same age as my daughter, and she said, we were just talking about it one day, and she said, no, I don't let my daughter go sleep over a house where her friend has an older brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she said that she, she, again, she's a counselor, so she's heard a lot about this. An older boy in the house is going to experiment with his sister's friends more than, if he's yeah, could do anything. So yeah. that made me think. So, you know, I was probably pretty careful. Most of my kids slept over really close family friends' houses. And mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we never had a problem. I feel like I went to sleepovers all the time. I was always spending the night at a friend's house or I didn't have as many over at mine, but we had birthday parties. And that was like, there's such wonderful memories from childhood, you know, like packing up your, your, um, uh, what is the thing you sleep in? Sleeping bag? Sleeping bag? Sleep- what is the bag you sleep in? <laughs> it's a sleeping, sleeping bag. bag. <laughs> <laughs> like rolling up your sleeping bag and staying up late and getting yelled at by the parents. Be like, go to bed. And then yeah. you giggle because you aren't going to bed. And you wake up in the morning and mom's made cinnamon rolls or something totally unhealthy yeah. that she wouldn't normally make. Like there's all these wonderful memories that our kids aren't getting because we're not allowing them to go. But I understand why we're not allowing them to go. You know, yeah. what about you, Chloe? Yeah, um, I wasn't allowed to sleep over if there was an older brother unless like there were a couple of situations where I was really good friends with you know my friend and then their older brother was really good friends with my older brother. Um, so the big overarching rule was I was not allowed to sleep over unless my parents knew the parents yeah. really well. Mm-hmm. But I was always allowed to have people spend the night at my house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Megan, you went to sleepovers, slumber parties? Yeah, it was always with families, same as Chloe, that we knew really well. There was an instance where a friend of mine was, or not, well, she was a friend of mine. It was a girl in my class was having a party. And 
it was like a day party. It was a long party. So she had guys and girls over initially, and then the girls could spend the night. And they ended up playing spin the bottle in like middle school. Oh my god! And I wasn't there, but I heard about it, of course, after. And, and you weren't there because have... your mother wouldn't let you go. Yeah, <laughs> right. smart mom. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but close friends, yes. I spent the night at my close friend's house a lot because my parents knew their parents very well. Mm. Yeah. There was an instance where I spent the night at a friend's house and her older brother did end up making out with one of our friends. Well, there's like the lure of like... I'm going to my friend's house and she has an older brother. And I've always that is not of, what sleepovers are for. No, no, they're not. <laughs> Let's talk about the benefits of allowing kids to go to sleepovers. Cause I mean, I shared a little bit about like I had great memories and stuff, but beyond building great memories, it helps your kids grow in independence. You know, they get to step away from you and your authority for a little while. They get to and have to listen to another set of parents and follow that household's rules. They have to be flexible to follow that household's rules. I, I remember a friend of mine, her um, her parents smoked. And so my mom beforehand, she was like, Abby, you know that so-and-so smokes and I need you to make sure that you don't, don't be rude. Don't be blah, blah, blah. Like it, it's like under stepping into another person's yeah. world and having to adjust as a child, having to adjust your expectations or how you how you act yeah. your manners I had a friend who's Filipino and her house always smelled like some kind of Filipino spice and mm. her mom's regular speaking voice was like a high-pitched yell and I can still hear her dad's voice and the way he pronounced her name in a certain way and I loved it I mean this house was had art everywhere like from the Philippines and like I I wouldn't have ever experienced that. I mean, I would have been to the, I would have been at their house without sleeping over, but it's just I think it's a great way to get to know other families and and what they do and what life is like for them. Yeah. I will say <clears throat> I Megan loved sleepovers, my social girl, but uh, my second daughter was a, a kind of afraid of them and yet, you know, she had friends always inviting her and we we did have to ease her into it and not not she didn't have to stay, but I will say if you have that kind of child, there's so many great rules you can put in place. Like I would call the mom and say, you know what? Emily wants to come to the party, but I'm picking it up at 11 yeah. um, because we're going to church tomorrow or whatever. I always gave an excuse. I didn't put it on her. And then I had codes with her. I always called at a certain time. She didn't have a cell phone. This was when she was younger. And we had codes. I would say, um, are you having fun? And they were all yes, no answers. And so if she said, yes, great, check. Do you feel safe? Yes, check. No. Okay. It, no, no discussion. I'm coming to get you. Give me, hand the phone to the mother. And I just say, you know what? She's really tired. She's had a big day. And I'm just going to pick her up. She's like, I, she could be coming down with something. You know, and I would go pick her up. And mm. yep. Yeah, she could even say, "My mom's making me go home." Mm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so well, and I think also another good way to provide an out for your child or prepare your child is to give them a phone. You know, if they don't Mm -hmm. have a phone, Mm -hmm. your husband can hand his phone over. Let them have some way to get a hold of you. I think it's smart. Yeah, Yeah, my mom did the same thing because um, there were a couple, you know, big birthday parties where my mom didn't know the parents, and so she would. I mean, God bless her would come pick me up at like midnight or something. Yeah, I She's would too. like, you know, I want to make sure you have fun, but we're not breaking this rule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then let's talk about some of the risks of allowing kids to go to sleepovers. Um, I think alcohol is a big one. I mean, maybe not for little, like under 12, but once they're... And more for boys. I don't know why. Again. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I worry about guns. I think mm. that I've and watched enough like like after school specials and those weird like shows where they're like, hey, come look at my dad's gun and then yeah. something happens. And I think the main one, the thing that keeps me from being excited about sending my kids to sleepovers is the internet. You know, yeah. I think mm-hmm. that there's something about when the sun goes down and when the parents aren't in the room, that even good kids are like, what can we get away with? Yeah. And when you have the internet and you have all of that in your hand, literally in your hand, it's just too too tempting yeah. for it's kids. It's the difference of truth or dare. 
before the internet and truth or dare after the internet. Right. Yeah. There's just so much more they can see and yeah. do. One of the things I would say too is for me, I knew very clearly what was right and wrong. And I knew if there was a bad situation, but I think it's hard when you're in a group of kids spending the night and there's that peer pressure of like, you don't want to be the one that speaks up that says like, we probably shouldn't do this guys. Cause then you're just like, a loser. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, and like what I was going to say to that truth or dare, we did, gosh, I hope somebody who's like around my age, if you're like in your early 40s, um, do you remember light as a feather, stiff as a board? Does anyone remember that? It was like you put like one girl lays down and everyone else puts their hands underneath her and she's supposed to float. Like, I don't know what we were doing. <laughs> what the heck? I know. And it was terrifying. It was like, the, I know. And like, I, if I was to talk to younger me, I'd be like, do not ever do that oh again. Gosh, yeah. yeah. But like we, you just want to do these things that feel a little bit like either scary or adventurous or rebellious just because you're around other friends and the sun has gone down sort of yeah. like the whole nothing good happens after, after midnight, 11 o'clock yeah. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that's eight o'clock in my world <laughs> <laughs> go to bed kids so true. and not all sleepovers are created the same i think that um a lot of moms think that like well and, and everybody here said it if i know the parents i'm gonna let my kids go but when do you, I mean, why, how would you ever let your kids go to a house where you don't know the parents? You know what I'm saying? Like everyone's like, oh, well, I have to know the family. Mm. Would you ever send your kids somewhere you don't know? Do people do that? I didn't. And even if I did know, sometimes you just know which parents are just a lot more lenient or gosh, go to bed and don't listen or yeah. don't keep an eye on them or allow things on their television that we would never allow. Um, See, I think people get a false sense of security because, and we were having this conversation over lunch the other day, a lot of people say, well, I, I'll let my kids go to a family that I know from church. And you have this sense of security. And the guy was like, uh, because I know we are like-minded. I know that we have the same values. And I'm like, people still do bad things, mm -hmm. even if they have the same values as you. People still have brokenness that makes them do bad things or allow their kids to do bad things. And I think, you know, if your child is, is hurt or is, is touched inappropriately, it's probably not by a total stranger. It's by somebody that they already knew and yeah. trusted. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we have a friend who was abused throughout her childhood by an older boy who was a family friend. And Chloe, you just said earlier, mm -hmm. oh, well, I went to, I, I went, I slept over at a house where the older brother was my brother's friend. That was the situation of this friend of ours. So yeah. I think that we get these false senses of security and it, it lets us, it lets us put down our boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked her, I was like, so what could your parents have done that could have made this situation different for you? And she's like... Not much. Um, yeah. Well, and no, a girl can be molested by, by another girl oh, well, and I, a boy by another boy. So it's kind of, right. you know, it's just kids want to experiment and they see things and they're going to experiment on people they know because that's who they're around. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I was going to say too, because I think about it like my parents was all about the, there was all about the older brother, but I have friends who were molested by older sisters and, yeah. and things like yeah. that. So yeah, it's... But she said, she's like, well, I thought that because my parents were friends with his parents and all of our families hung, our families hung out together, my parents would never approve, wouldn't let me be around someone who, who would hurt me. So right. I didn't think that what he was doing was wrong, you know? Gosh, yeah, that's so hard. Yeah. I think to some kids, and Megan, you could tell your story of how, um, how you kind of stood up one time for yourself at a, a party, but you have to know your child too. Are they go with the crowd or are they, I can stand up to the crowd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she said that when I asked her what could they have done, she said they could have been more open with me about bodily autonomy mm -hmm. and having the right to say no. They could have talked to me about that icky feeling that I had mm -hmm. in my gut when it was happening and that I could have talked to them about that feeling. Um, they could have told me that things that happen in the dark um, and in secret aren't usually okay. And that I could talk to them. She's like, I felt like I could talk to my parents about a lot of things, but for some reason there was something really like shameful and private about this that that's a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. But I do think that when it comes to sleepovers, most of the bad things that are happening like this are not happening at just this random 
birthday party, it's the frequent ones that we let our kids go to. And that's why I feel like a lot of us get this false sense of security. I only let them go to this family's house. Well, yeah, I don't know. Well, in it, I mean, outside of the like abuse scenario, at what age is what does anyone know the average age of like like when kids start spending the night at other people's houses? Because in my mind, like, yes, abuse is the extreme bad outcome. Then I'm also like, I don't want to deal with a tired, cranky kid that didn't sleep all night because they were up (laughs) playing and they never actually went to bed. So is it like eight or is it? I know exactly the first time because I wanted to have a sleepover so badly. <laughs> and my mom finally for my um, sixth grade birthday. Oh, so I was, I don't know, 11, 13. 12, yeah. I don't know. How old are you? Yeah. I, and I'll never forget. I got to I have six friends and I was so excited. Yeah. So, But it was sixth grade. I think so I, I want to say I was around that same age, but I think now like, so my older son has gone to a sleepover and it was maybe a little over a year ago and he's 11 now. So he was probably, it was probably this boy's like ninth or 10th birthday. And it's funny. I say, I say the exact same thing. Everything, everyone has said, I know the mom really well, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, you just, yeah. um, I don't know, Megan, statistically, I don't know what the average age is. I do know that as far as like reasons to not let your kid go to a sleepover. Some people say, I don't want to deal with a cranky kid the next day. To me, that's not a good enough reason. Like if that's the only thing holding you back, nah, let him go. Be a yes mom. Yeah, (laughs) be a yes mom. You're dealing with that one time. I don't think that that's the reason. I do think it's important to ask your child every time they come home, did you feel safe? Yeah. Because um, I remember having discussions with my girls saying, no, something about their dad. Right. Wasn't anything. They just don't feel comfortable and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Icky borders, girls. Good. Have it. Oh, no, or let's even, not do that again. Even like I remember a uh, sleepover, there was like a Ouija board brought out and I was really uncomfortable and I was like, I, I left the room. I was like, I'm not doing this. And the girls made me feel really bad about it. Like they yeah. were really mean to me about it. And like that was like, I didn't feel like, you know, in danger, but I was like, I don't really want to keep hanging out with these girls. Right. So I think it's hard because I see so much value in sleepovers. Like I have so many amazing memories from sleepovers with my girlfriends. Like, but having those conversations is so important because mm-hmm. how else do you find out what's going on outside of your home? Well, and I think the conversation needs to start earlier than on the way to the sleepover. You know, if you do allow your child to to spend the night at someone's house, you can't be in the car driving them there with their sleeping bag and be like, <laughs> okay, so honey, if the older brother or if someone brings out the, their iPad and shows you a picture, because that child's going to enter that house totally terrified. <laughs> yeah. You know, you need to have the conversation. Maybe the first sleepover they get invited to, you end up saying no. And then you start the conversation because you know there's probably another invite coming eventually. And you just prepare them. Yeah. Tell me. Talk to me about things. Here's here's what you can say no anytime. You don't have to, you know, all these things. And if your gut is telling you no, mm-hmm. you don't worry about battling the child. And mm-hmm. and and the party that Megan referred to, you know, where the they did end up playing spin the bottle. My husband and I went back and forth because we knew this is the first boy. This was the first boy girl party that was going to turn into a slumber party of Megan's yeah. whole middle school. It was a big deal. We went back and forth and we just didn't feel good about it. She got to have her best friend from another school spend the night with her. That's how we kind of said, oh, you know nice. what? We're not going to allow you to go. But but I remember we put her off for weeks. She was coming up to us. Did you did you decide? Did you decide? Can I go? Can I go? It was hard. But sometimes you just have to look at your kids and go, you know what? We've prayed about it. We've talked about it. We don't feel good about it. Yeah. 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 I can't remember what happened 20 minutes ago, but if it's a social event and I need an answer, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. Really. you. <laughs> I love it. Tenacious. <laughs> One other thing I was going to say, you know, that was, th- there have been times I think where I stuck up for myself, but there was a time where they were watching a movie and I knew it was rated something I wasn't supposed to be watching. And I watched it anyways. And it was a scary movie. It was like what lies beneath or something like that. I don't even know. I didn't even watch the whole thing, but there was one scary scene. And I literally could not go to the bathroom by myself for like a month because I thought something was going to come out of the shower yeah. drain. So that's <laughs> the bad thing is if your kids do it yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they have to reap their own consequences and it's just awful. Yeah. Like I'll never forget that movie. It was terrible. Well, we have a great article four questions to ask yourself before you allow your child to sleep at someone else's house. One of them is, am I comfortable asking the other parent important questions? Because there are a lot of questions you want to ask them. Like, are there guns? Um, 
Will alcohol be accessible? Will you be around? And if you are not comfortable asking that parent those questions, that's probably a sign that this is not a house that you should be letting your child go to, you know? One thing I do vaguely remember doing, Susan, and I don't know if I'm making this up, but I feel like when we were younger, there were a couple of times when we did almost sleepovers Mm -hmm. where we would go to their house really late. With the sleeping bag in their pajamas. (laughs) Yeah. And then we would get to like do the whole experience, but then our parents would come get us at a certain time and it was like a good segue into like almost doing it. Now they call those sleep unders. Oh. Sleep under. <laughs> mm-hmm. That sure sounds sleep over. Yeah, sketchy. I don't. I didn't make it up. I'm just <laughs> telling you what it's called. Um, another question to ask yourself is: Will older siblings be around? Because here's a st- statistic: forty percent, as many as forty percent of children who are sexually abused are abused by older or more powerful children. Because you know, older siblings look like superheroes. They want to be like them. They want their approval. So if you find out that an older sibling is going to be there, you have to talk to your child about boundaries. Um, no bathroom sharing, mm. no going into a sibling's room, no closed doors. Like tell them to just put these walls up, put these boundaries mm-hmm. up to protect themselves. This is going to be really bad because this is very sexist. So we may pull this, but uh, I had a thing that both the parents had to be there. In other words, if just the dad was going to be home, and this was even for my boys because there was just something about dads not being as tuned in um, if something was going down. And then also for my girls, it was just, they just weren't as comfortable going and saying yeah, anything that's to a, a father, father than a mother. I don't know why they just felt more comfortable. Oh, so yeah. I would ask that question and say, are you guys both going to be home? Like, what's the deal? Who's yeah. in charge? Blah, blah, blah. I think yeah, that's a great that's one. Great. Yep. Yeah. I think I would also ask, will they have, will they have access to unfiltered internet? Because, and I don't think it's out of the realm of, you know, reasonability to say, I don't want them to have access to the internet at all. Turn off the Wi-Fi at 10 o'clock and let them play board games. Let them tell stories or whatever, because you can't be awake the whole time. There's no way that the parents are going to stay up later than the kids. We are tired. We're going to fall asleep. So if my kid's going to have access to the internet at one in the morning, I'm not, I'm not down with that. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, as a parent, you, you drag out that baby monitor. Hey, our kids used, we, we had a, a guest room house and, but we had a, we had an intercom out there. I could hear everything going down oh all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if it got a hand, I'd press that little button and I'd say, Hey, what are you guys doing out there? That's mm. great. You know? Um, it's just okay that they know they're being watched. Yeah. 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 That's good. Well, I and have a, I have a question though. So let's say you've been friends with these, whoever the family is for forever. Cause obviously all of our answers were, yes, we were allowed to spend the night if it was a good family. How do you ask your friends, the parents, those questions mm. without insulting them. Like if so, like I'd be afraid to ask one of my friends here if they had like, you know, filtered internet or if mm. they were going to be, because they'd be like, you know me, of course, like, of course, you know? So how do you ask those questions without literally offending someone? Well, I don't think that you can assume anybody does anything anymore. I think that your the safety of your kid is too important. So my older son went to a sleepover a year and a half ago. The mom and I have been friends for years and we go to church together, all these things, but still I'm not in her home all the time. And this is my child. So I said to her, Hey, when a group of boys are together, they get into some stuff. Mm -hmm. What kind of internet access are they going to have? And she, I don't even remember what she said, but it gave me comfort. You know, like I think that kind of like the conversation we had a few episodes ago about like, telling a mom, telling another mom, her kid did something mean or vice versa. If you have a rapport with this woman, she's going to understand that you just care about your kid. Mm. You know, like, I don't think, I don't think I would be like, Hey, I know that your husband probably watches pornography. So is there going to (laughs) be stuff around? I mean, I wouldn't like (laughs) say something offensive like that, but I think that most things are within reason. And I do think you know, putting the burden on your child too. Like I always had that Mm. 11 o'clock check-in call and it was me calling them. So if you have to give them a phone or if you have to ask the mom and, and you, and you can tell in their voice, do you feel safe? Are you guys, you know, having good fun or is stuff going down? And then you don't hesitate. If you have any little inkling that stuff is going down based on their answers, you go, you know, I'm going to come pick you up. Bye. And you hang up and you 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on over there and they don't have a choice and they're, they're, they don't get to argue. Right. Um, well, and I think too. So what if, oh, sorry. So what if the mom is like, why are you coming to pick him up? Like, what, well, I've had that wrong? situation. And, and I just make an excuse. I think she's really tired and we've got a big day tomorrow. So oh, I'm what just going to get her now. standing there and the kid's like, I'm not tired. I'm fine. <laughs> well, she didn't do that because she knew she needed to come mm. home. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just wondering, like, do you ever get in a situation where the other parents like, you know, offended mm. or uh, who knows? So I think I never really let you guys spend a night out with, with a parent that I wasn't super tired transparent with I agree. I agree so like you think you know of of the place you spent the night I knew all this mom I it wasn't like you guys weren't no no, no. I'm just thinking like yes obviously you knew the parents really well and I'm thinking of the parents I know really well here and when James gets to that age and we are really transparent and I'm coming to pick him up because he doesn't feel comfortable at one of our good friends houses and then I have to be like he doesn't feel comfortable you know like what well I'm you wouldn't say that. that you'd say you know what I just he's I don't know what's going down. I don't know if he's coming down with something. I don't know. But I, if that was just not a good phone call I had with him and I'm going to bring, you know, I had a similar, I had a situation like this happen actually. And it kind of speaks to my last point, which is, is your child ready? I think that that's another Mm -hmm. thing you have to consider before you say yes. Um, my younger son went to a birthday party and, the mom was like, it's going to go late. Like, I think that they're going to hang out until probably 10 or so. And, so I let him be there on his own without me. I've known the mom for decades and she called me. I checked in. I said, how's he doing? She said, he's fine. 10 minutes later, she texted me and she said, I just found him under the bed. It was a loft bed, not like a shore bed. Yeah. I just found him under under my son's bed. He was crying. Aww. I and And I said, I'm on my way. And when I got there, I went into the little boy's room and she was there under the bed with him oh. playing a game or whatever. And they were all by themselves in the room. And so it wasn't a sleepover, but this was a party where he didn't know any other kid except for yeah. the birthday boy because he went to a different school. And so it's like that kind of thing where I think if you know the mom well enough, she's going to already have a read on it. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's something that's happening at the house or with the kids that she doesn't know about, I don't know. I think that's a conversation you need to pull her aside later and be like, you know what? Graham said that this was happening and he was uncomfortable and I'm, I'm really sorry, but I want you to know that it was happening, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think those are all good responses. I'm just envisioning, obviously my kids aren't old enough to spend the night, but I'm envisioning like our close friends here. And if I just feel like that would be super awkward if something, you know, they're doing a spend the night all together and you get a phone call from your kid and you have to go get them and you know, yeah. how do you explain that to the yeah. parent yep. without burning that friendship? <clears throat> Well, if your friends are going to let that burn your friendship, then there's a problem mm-hmm. to begin with. Yeah. Because, you know. Oh, no, I know. I mean, I, I there's not a certain scenario. I have, right, like right, I said, right. I even, right. I'm just envisioning, you know, how do you, how do you Hampton. deal with all of that? You just send Hampton. You send the husband to get them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they never explain themselves of anything. They so just true. go in there. And they're like, okay with it. Hey, yeah. I'm here. Always, Bye. You yeah. get suckered into like hanging out there with them. You yeah, know? you would. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you get invited to a party and you have a no rule, no sleepover policy, or you're not comfortable with this family, a good way to respond is just, we're not a sleepover family, but I'm so glad our kids are friends and I would love to find a time for them to hang out together. You know, could she stay until 10 or so? Like we were saying, there's ways to RSVP, you know, decline the invitation gracefully and not burn that bridge. So, you know, if you don't even want to let them go, you can do it and still maintain the friendship. Mm, Any final thoughts from you ladies? Do you guys want to have a sleep? Should we have a sleepover? Uh, yes. And record some podcast. Yes. <laughs> Megan, I invited you. No, Bobby, you're I not like invited. In no. Own, but no sleeping bags for me. Thank you. I know <laughs> Megan's mom really well. So. <laughs> Chloe, do you think your mom would let you come spend the night no, in my no, house? No, you know, it's, I, this is a side note, but somebody just said to me, I listen to the podcast all the time. Yeah, I think it's so cool that Megan Megan calls you Susan. And I guess she only does that at work, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it's too confu- Like, if I were to, I just feel like it's too confusing to hear me say mom. I don't know. Yeah. I love it. Maybe it's more confusing when I call you Susan. Who knows? <laughs> well, we really want to hear what you have to say about this. So look for this post on Instagram. You can follow us at imom.com. And thanks for listening.
Thanks for listening to the iMom podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.